we will do it after the pledge. Thank you. Okay, 7 p.m. Let's rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to get started uh, on our hopefully final meeting of uh, our budget workshops. Um, what I'd like to do is kind of take us up to the agenda. Each of us have an agenda. Would you review it? See if you wanted to make any changes on this agenda. And uh, you can you can't change. Oh, I can't change that. Right. Sorry. <laughs> can I get a motion to accept and approve? We can't change it. I'll make a motion to accept your agenda. <laughs> Second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's move forward then. Okay. So budget areas to be reviewed. We're going to talk today through. I know a number of us had questions. Um, I think the best thing to consider us looking at today would be to go along and we'll go down the list. If we have any specific questions on any of these respective topics, we'll go through them tonight so we can finalize it. We made a lot of progress on Saturday, and um, I'm hoping we ought to be able to finalize our, our budget for us today, tonight. So under general, general government, um, anything on that end that we wanted to discuss? So I received a, and we've all received a letter um, from library. Of, She's just a I have a couple of letters, but who, um. who, who was the, uh, the author of the library letter here? There was an email with, from Lenore, Lenore McLean, and then there was a letter from Don Barlow. So we received a letter talking about the restitution of funding for the assistant director of the library. I'm going to bring it up under this topic because I think that falls under general government. Is, is that agreed? Yeah. So uh, we received that letter about the restitution. What what I um, I want to do now is I kind of want to uh, set the tone on this a little bit and then go through the group and just have a conversation before we move forward. Um, the first thing is, it is generally the policy of our board to allow the sub-boards, both the Board of Education and the Board of Finance, to make determinations on what they need in order to submit to us. Um, and and uh, we will usually review those things and then make appropriate recommendations. I came away with a question, because this was rather current. I didn't have an opportunity to, um, to do more research on it, which I would normally do. But I'm going to start by asking the question, and then we'll walk through our board and we can talk together. My question is, I'm understanding that there are two positions that are empty right now, one that was eliminated and then one that was a different person. That Can you articulate that for me a little, please? Uh, sure. So the, um, the assistant director was hired to be the director of the Killingwood Library. So that is the position that, is, uh, that was taken out of the budget. $38,000. Um, the other position was uh, our reference librarian who unfortunately passed away. Um, we've been able to make do with existing staff. We you know, shift around some hours and made that work. Do you still have that position available to you now? Did that position get eliminated? Um, current, uh, previously, there was a reference librarian. Uh, yes. Um, so there was a reference librarian at EHFPL and a reference librarian at Radcliffe. We promoted the cataloger at EHFPL to reference librarian, so we're without the cataloger at EHFPL. 
And so you have a position available that un remains unfilled, that you're, you're still seeking. You actually, if, if, if you, you really have two positions you're seeking in uh, fulfillment, one is one that's already assigned and one that you'd like to restore. Am I, I just want to make sure I'm correct on this. Um, the, uh, correct. What we were, we're doing with the, um, the position of the, the uh, librarian that passed away is we're just giving those hours to other employees to make do. We're not looking to hire or replace that position. Um, we're looking to replace the assistant director position um, because it fulfilled some essential duties that unfortunately the current staff is not qualified to carry out. Okay, and what are those essential duties that are well, uh, first the challenges? Course, it is the, uh, the assistant director fills in for the director when he's away. So when I go on fraternity leave this summer, the assistant director is the person that steps in. They do the time cards, they fill out the invoices, they uh, you know, make they manage the staff, handle any issues that come up, you know, if I'm not there. That's the most important thing. Right now, there's no one doing that. Um, the other thing the assistant director does is um, he or she manages the, um, the statistics for the library. The library gathers a lot of data in terms of what, what we're spending, what, you know, where we're spending it, um, how many books are going out, what types of books are going out, um, tracking attendance, uh, any statistic you can think of um, is tracked by the assistant director. It's very time consuming. And the, perhaps from your point of view, the most important thing the assistant director uh, will do is fill out grants. Uh, grant writing is a very time consuming and very important process, but unfortunately, nobody on staff other than me can actually do that, and I just don't have the time. So having somebody that we can pay and you know, apply for grants, especially if we're talking about upgrades to the facilities or even a new facility down the road, we would need somebody to write grants for that. Okay, um, and if you don't mind, I'm going to now switch some questions over to our selectmen. So, in their budget, they requested that other thing. Is there any way you can maybe provide any color to the decision that the selectmen made in, in not bringing this extra position on? There, there was a reluctance to uh, fill the position until we knew there was a need for it. We have the uh, East Town Free Public Library is now in the probate court's hands. Once that's complete, and I expect that they will come out with an affirmative decision that uh, yes, indeed, it can be transferred to the town. We have to go to public meeting, town meeting, and the town is going to decide whether or not they want to take that obligation on, take that, that building on. I don't know where that's going. If we say no, we're going to wind up having to let uh, some staff go. Uh, and I really am reluctant to staff at this point before we know what's going to happen. That shouldn't take that long. I anticipate a response from the probate court fairly soon. So the, so the uh, question I think that's in my mind is, it was closed for now, but you're open to the idea of this role? You know, if, if the town elects to have two libraries and to maintain the system we have, then it means we take over that library building. And they, down the road, say, yes, we do want to continue both of them as they are. I may well have to fill it. But uh, I really don't want to hire someone and then discover we have to let them go. Go through the whole process and then find that we that's not needed at this point. Okay, thank you. That, that was kind of the basis for the decision. Okay. And I'm, if you don't mind, I, and I'm asking these questions on behalf of not only the citizens but <clears throat> my board, they'll probably ask you additional questions. Sure. But I want, to, I want to make sure we get a full flavor of this because this is something that came up. I want to also start by saying I don't want the library or anybody in the library group to think that the town nor this finance board thinks anything but very high things about it. Um, I, I look around and, and you know, as a, a person involved in now the budgeting process, you can really see where, the, where certain things are percolating, where certain things are happening and where those events occur. And, um, you know, we have our education system. It's obviously a significant impact on our town. but. When Brad spoke on the senior center, I can see where that's a real source and a center for our community. The library is also the same thing. It's not ignored by this group in any way. So we don't want anyone to think that while we're having this somewhat difficult con uh, conversation tonight, um, that we by any means think badly. And in fact, we want to enhance and, and, and make our library a even better than it is today. So I just want to make sure we, we understand the, the approach that we're taking is to really try to find out where you are and try to make it work sure. and be reasonable. Okay, so 
now you're talking about taking some personal leave and in the absence of the directors or anyone there that's going to be able to cover now? The short answer is no. Um, there's two branch managers that can each manage you know, the day-to-day -day work of the uh, EHF deal in Rathbun, but there's no one person to go to um, in my absence. Okay. So in the absence of doing this, I have to counsel you to consider that you need to probably start prepping them because oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they definitely need to have the ability to be autonomous in your absence. So. Okay, so I think I have enough started. I'm going to go around and, and invite my board to ask you questions if they have it, and then we're going to decide what we need to do. If you want to start, Harvey, you might be the most expert in our group, too, anyway, I, given as a liaison role to the library. Well, let me start with the easy stuff first. Um, you just mentioned something that um, well, perhaps is, but even if it is, maybe needs to be a higher priority, which is um, cross-training and making sure that you're not dependent on any one person. Um, so that's... Take that as for what it, yeah. Um, I would, I think, have to um, conclude that the Board of Selectmen have considered this, have done their homework, and that I'm not sure that on this short time frame, we have any basis to, we do not have the knowledge to put the time in studying it to override their decision at this time. Um, I think this is, from my personal view, this is one of those things where, okay, let's do, let's follow the Board of Selectmen's recommendation with the frame of mind that, um, in six months, you know, two months, six months, nine months, whatever, or at next budget cycle, the library board can make us may be able to make in a position to make a stronger case based on the experience of having to try to cover this thing in the absence of an assistant director. I think that's my thinking at the moment. No, is that kind of what your idea had been all along, Emma? Mm -hmm. I just want to clarify that. Thank you. Tracy. I will just ditto what Harvey said. It's with the status of it unknown to go and, you know, hire someone and then not know what the situation is. I don't think that's fair to anybody you hire. So I ditto what, what Harvey said. Um, my feelings are the same. I'd, I'd like to see the library have some interchangeable parts where in his absence, in the in the director's absence, it can still operate. Uh, you know, the, the time cards can be processed, the payroll can get done, the uh, bookkeeping can be uh, taken care of. Uh, so that's, I think, where they need to focus is get some cross training uh, in place. So I, I wouldn't see that we could override the uh, selectman's uh, decision based on what I've heard. Right. Uh, my question is really for Emmett on this one, and. Um, Best case scenario on a calendar moving forward and kind of a worst case scenario. So um, when would you anticipate this going to town referendum as far as taking over the library? Well, it's going to be a function of, when, possession of the when the probate court completes their work. Okay. I have absolutely no idea when that's going to be. I would not think it would take long. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's straightforward. We're down this road before with the Rathbun. It's the same exact format, the same exact probate court. Okay. I would I would think that it would move fairly quickly. Not having been through that, <coughs> yeah. what's your estimate on fairly quickly? Two months, three months, I, four months? I, I, months? It's pure speculation on my part. Okay. So we don't know? We don't know. Okay. I don't have any other questions. But... Todd? Yes, yeah, so I agree with everything that's been said so far. I had a few more comments and questions of my own. Uh, in order to have long-term success, you need to make an investment. And there's a lot of discussion in town right now, discussion on what they think the situation is, 
or what they think, or they, what they know the situation is a mixture of both. For long-term success, this is a public library. We need the voice of the town to speak and make a decision. Actually, it's seen a clear plan and a clear case for moving forward. That's for long-term success. I fully agree with the Board of Selectmen. To hire people now is premature, dangerously premature, and it just won't do much good. But I also agree that it's, it's very important. You have two library buildings, all the books and all the other stuff, the resources you have, those materials, and you have a staff of people. They, I encourage you to be cross-trained as much as possible. You should not be dependent on one person. And, and with that in mind, as part of your selling point to the town when it comes to that, however many months the way it is, um, what, I'd like to know what the job description is for each one of the individuals, each one of the positions in your library, including you, your position, of course, the director. Now, I, I heard that the assistant director does financial stuff as well. Okay. Um, and um, so I, I'm looking for a job description. I imagine other people in town are as well. So, but for now, hold your fire, cross train until it's the right time, take it to the town for a decision on the two buildings, and then proceed accordingly. Thank you. And I will just say if there are job positions, uh, job descriptions for all the positions at the library. Um, those are on file. I have a copy that can send them out. Uh, just want to make it clear that we, we do have those descriptions. Are you, are you finding any, do you think you have the capability to, to do the cross-training or to do the things that are missing in this assistant director? Is that maybe the bigger picture of what it is? Director skill set, unfortunately, none of the current staff have the comfort level or the skill set to take on those responsibilities. They just, they don't. Um, I can certainly cross-train. We can definitely have somebody sign time cards. That's not a problem. Because as for filling in 100% for me, there is no one person that can do that. Um, I can try my best to distribute between the two branch managers. And of course, you know, I can have staff switch between buildings. That's not an issue. It's just as far as the spreadsheets and tracking and spending and uh, circulation statistics, there's just, there isn't anyone. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, just make note that the compensation for the current library staff is very low, just how we've managed budget cuts in the past. So it's um, difficult to expect someone getting paid close to minimum wage to step up and run two libraries. But you do have the extra, you do have the extra budget item for that other person that you've been spreading hours on. Though. Yes. You do have funds in, in your in your section there. Correct, but the assistant director still works 16 hours a week where it was just her and one other person in the building. So that funding is currently not in the budget. We'd have to restructure our hours if, if we wanted to stay within the budget. Okay, so can I have a motion on uh, maintaining the uh, decision of the board selectment? Does anyone want to? Or not maintain it. Do we need a motion? Do we need a motion, it's or we the, just? It's as it's stated in the budget. So unless we're going to change anything, then we don't have yeah. to make any changes. Okay. Good. Then, uh, then I think the group is in agreement that uh, we're going to continue with what the board of selectmen recommended. We now, with that said, we as, we do yeah. invite you to return to us during the cycle as changes happen, and we'll consider reconsider. But at present, I think it's unanimous that we feel um, we're going to continue with what they decided. Okay. Um, next item we had was public safety. Um, did we have anything on that list with them? You, you did not. They you kind and, of came up you, with the conclusion. And, and I had emailed them all that you had reviewed the budgets and you were good with them. All right, good. I have, Mr. Chair, I have one question on public safety. Maybe I was asleep at the time. I don't know. The, the $65,000 for the boat, um, is that out of the budget or in the budget? In last year's budget. It's in the current year budget. It's, but I didn't see it listed there as well. It's in the current year budget, Todd. So you would find it. So it's there. 17, 18. It's right there. Oh, the current year budget, yeah. yes. Oh, so it's good for this year. Yeah. The bid's out on it. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Okay, I was worried. It's more. It's better off than I thought it was. Yeah, it's already been, it's, it's already been covered. It's all done. Yeah. Anything else? That's it for me for public safety. All right, let's move on to public works. So we invited our public works director to return. Um, what, I guess it's really a function of one question that we, we had two questions that we, we came up on. Um, but we'll talk about the larger of the two, and that is the, uh, the road restoration on Petticoat Lane. 
So Todd, I'm going to turn it over to you in this point because it was you that asked the question. Why don't you go first? Yes, forward? sir. Um, a, a road, the uh, the quality of a highway. There's the three top priorities in making a good road, and I, you probably know this already, but I just, just want to build up my case here. Number one is drainage. Drainage is the most important. The second is your substrate. The substrate is in good condition. It's built in the right material, compacted the right way, and sloped the right way, but it's very dependent upon drainage. If you have poor drainage, your substrate's going to deteriorate. And the third most important thing, obviously, is the pavement. But the pavement is, is dependent upon the material again, and the application, and the care of the application, but also on the substrate. The substrate's dependent on the drainage. The drainage is extremely important. And I took a ride down Petticoat Lane, it's, it's all broken up, pretty bad shape. And uh, obviously, what causes a pavement to break up is, is overloading, a lot of usage, heavy weight. And what really drives it is uh, poor substrate, which is driven by poor drainage, a lot of water. Water freezes, moves things apart, like ice freezes in your, in your freezer, in your glass. And that causes the breakup. And the, the road needs a lot of work, that's for sure. And I took a trip, and I counted 16 either water crossing structures or drainage structures today, in that road today, the full length. And it probably needs more than that to, for adequate drainage, because you don't want to dump the water in somebody's backyard or somebody's lawn. It has to go in the proper place. Otherwise, you have major uh, legal and financial, uh, ultimately financial problems. So I, um, I didn't see anything in the budget for doing the engineering work on the drainage, because a road is like anything else. You've got to make a major investment. Otherwise, if you don't do the job properly, you're going to be back redoing the road for a lot more money with a lot of aggravated people that live on the road as well. So the, the, the drainage is extremely important as well as the water crossings. And I didn't see anything there for engineering. I know you said you're going to do it yourself, but uh, that's a lot of work. And do you have the tools to do that type of work? So the thing is with the road, and I've been here seven years, and every year we do a road. Um, it is, I would say, petticoat and talking with my crew has not, it never was designed back when. Basically, it was a, a road that they oiled, and then they kept oiling and sanding, and then finally they threw, you know, a couple inches of asphalt here, there. In different places. So, as we've progressed, drainage issues have arised, and we've addressed them. Um, at this point, we don't have major issues with drainage on Petticoat. If we replace cross pipes that are failing, um, reestablish the swales that have filled in over the years, there isn't major engineering that needs to be done on that road. It's not a road that floods, that has excessive groundwater, it doesn't heave. Um, it just never was properly sloped, it doesn't have the proper crown on it, so water sits. So by totally reclaiming it, you're grinding up the asphalt that's there, mixing it with the base, recompacting it, putting a crown on the road and sloping it and directing it where you want it to go. So. It's not, we're not a city where we have to collect the water and point discharge it. We try to do swales along the road, so it's evenly distributed, and that's how it's handled. Well, I have to say, in honesty, I disagree with you strongly. I saw drains that were plugged, ditches oh, weren't, right. even, weren't even flowing. We have and to I maintain. See, I see. What, I, what I'm looking for is... Uh, at least, don't take my word for it, get an engineering opinion, a third party. I think it's worth the investment because we can easily spend over a million dollars on that road. And it's going to cost, it's going to cost, I don't, I don't think the drainage is adequate, frankly. Some of it is, but a lot of it is not, and it shows because the drains aren't working. And, uh, the, uh, and the road is all broken up. And that's a combination of reasons, as you just said. But I'm sure water's got a lot to play with that. So, and I'm concerned about water. And once you get the crown right, now the, the road is shedding water properly. Now those ditches are flowing with more water, 
And if they're not large enough, the water's going to overflow and go into people's lawns or backyards or basements. And that would be a huge problem. So I would very much encourage you to have a, an engineering study, uh, an evaluation, if you will, of the drainage. And is there any opportunity for better drainage, which, which I think there is. Because once you start doing reclamation, you've now got a lot of money invested. And you don't want to find out after the road is done that your drainage isn't, isn't adequate. So I encourage you to do some upfront engineering. So I think the bigger picture on the point from a finance board perspective, you're the subject matter expert there. And I think the bigger question is just be cautious there in that. I think he just articulated it. He has some concern. He doesn't want to get us down the road where we have to go back and spend more money than we needed if we just knew about it up front. I think that's a bigger picture. But if you're not seeing anything of significance um, to us in terms of the Well, it's the road, just... The life of pavement is anywhere from 20 to 30 years, and we have not touched that road in, you know, other than patching here, there, and it never even truly had the correct asphalt applied. So it's just there are certain areas in town where we know we have drainage issues, where there's constant flooding, where there's erosion on the edges of the road. Petticoat is pretty straightforward. It's directing it to the swales and discharging it to the lowlands and it's I mean we'll look into it but I just think we're probably fine I believe so the, so the number that's in the budget was actually the number that was in this year's budget right so it was supposed to get done in 17 18. correct there was a contingency in that number for the increased price of asphalt so we should be fine okay because that because the number that you came up with was actually come, it was like two years ago that you came up with that number. Right. The price of asphalt hasn't changed. Okay. It stayed pretty, and when I spoke with the contractor, their price stayed the same. Um, and the drainage improvements that we are planning on doing is not included in that number. That would come from our capital item okay. that we use to replace cross pipes and that sort of thing. So if I understand that bet correctly, so there are additional funds beyond that close to half million dollar number we were looking at that would Correct. address. I have two other, other line issues. items. One okay. is miscellaneous drainage, I believe it's titled, and then the other one's road program. So all the cross pipes and that we plan on doing as soon as we finish with our brush clearing. Um, to start replacing the cross pipes now. There's plenty of time for any settling or. Do you have as built of the, of the drains that are in there now? So, how do you know how you're going to replace it? Will you replace with in, with in kind material if it's shown to be adequate? So, you have the elevations and pitches correct? Well, you can see when a lot of times it'll have settled the wrong way and you can correct it or if there's sediment in the pipe, we fix it. You know, we look at what's happening when we excavate out and see. You know which way you want to direct the water. And so you pitch it. That's what our crew does. We replace pipes constantly. It's a, it's a skill set and they're trained. You can do it once or twice, but a whole, a whole different, a whole road with connecting drains, that's no, a these, dangerous pool. No, we're just talking cross pipes, not basin to basin. I would strongly recommend that you at least do an ash belt analysis, because once you dig up a pipe, you can no way put it back the way you thought it was originally, because you didn't measure anything. Uh, right, well, we set the elevation. We we survey in-house elevations, and we excavate and reset them. Oh, I, uh, I have a sense, though, that perhaps yeah. you're not aware of all the capabilities. No, it's coming out have. now. Right. <laughs> That's but my I, I guess the biggest concern we as a board would probably consider is, did you allocate enough money or exactly. not? And I, I understand money. that between what you've allocated and what you have, that we didn't actually count in on that allocation. That's correct. I have one more question. The, the 485000 is that a quote from a contractor or a several contractors? Well, we go off a state bid, so that's the low bid. So you, 
the state business. Please explain the process, how you got that number, I guess. What's the, what work What work is that number going to buy? Does that include the, the it, it, moving the, milling out the, the pavements there now, reclaiming the road? We don't mill road. it out. We reclaim it and mix it with the existing base. So it includes milling or reclaiming, they call it. Mm -hmm. um, the grading and then the application of two lifts of asphalt. Okay, so that's strictly the road, the pavement. But as far as the drainage, that's the other two accounts that you have. Correct. So what's the total bill going to be for both the reclaiming the road, reconditioning it, and installing the drainage? What's your budget? Is it probably yeah, better? Right. We don't know what the bill is until you pay it. But what was right. the budget? The reclaiming and the asphalt, it will be about the figure I have in there. Um, the cross pipes are something that we're gonna. We're How much should we, Cindy? Do you know what that number is that we put in for the cross uh, in that line item? Can you identify? It's, it's not broken out by job. It wasn't. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a generalized budget. I understand. I I can in in speaking to Todd's concerns and Beth and I working on these, she's been spot on with her roads in the past. Every road we've done, with with our budget, we haven't had a concern. This is number seven. Okay, explain for my ignorance. You said the 485 came from a state bid. Well, that's that? why we, as a town, use the state bid for paving. So the state, through the DAS um, bidding process, just like on their state roads, they have a list of contractors that have bid and they're qualified. So we can pick and choose contractors from that list because they're low bid for the state without going out to bid. It just saves the whole bidding process and in turn we save money. So those contractors never saw this road, they just bid other jobs and you're going by dollars per square foot from those other bids? So these, these No, guys... the contractor that we use in town has seen the road. Okay. And that contract... But it is basically, they price it out based on square footage. Right, yeah. Okay, and that contractor that has seen the job will be doing the job. I hope as long as he's awarded in this next round, but he has been since I've been here. And we've had very good luck with the quality of his work. Thank you. Okay, are you all set? Good. Question? I have full confidence in our uh, Public Works staff and our director. So I have no reason to think that the road won't come out just fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm fine with this. I do have another question. To uh, Beth? Yeah. Here. Did you have any more questions on this? No, on this topic. So on the calcium chlorine, is that what it is? For the yes. dirt roads? Have you ever thought about, um, I don't know how many miles or however it goes, but um, Alternating years, do half one year, half the next year, half one year, half the next year. We couldn't. It, it's standard practice across the board to apply calcium chloride to stabilize it not only for dust, but it binds the silt so they're not being eroded off into the streams or what have you. So, but it was an item that people immediately gravitated to, and that would be the least detrimental. To lose, I guess, in my budget, so I agree to it. But it's standard practice to apply that. Annually. Right, and now this 1718, it wasn't done. Correct. And now we, we're saying 1819, it's not going to get done. Right. So I'm wondering, we put half back, or I, like I don't know how you divide it up. Well, we could split it. I mean, we know what our most heavily traveled yeah. gravel roads are, and we could apply it to that. And then test out the other ones and see what the. Correct. Did you? How did you make out with your snow budget at the end? We probably will be over. Not. We were right there um, before this last storm, so I don't have the overtime hours and the subcontractors yet. But we were pretty close to exceeding it. The selectmen took that out as well. Would should we ask uh, their? Thinking on that, good idea. So, Emmett, I'm going to come back to you based on uh, 
Bruce's observation that this was another item that was removed from your budget um, process. Do you want to try to add color to it? Do you think uh, something that you want to stand? What is your recommendation? So I'll let you speak to if you'd like to add to anything to that. Could you see us putting half back? Which was the budget item? Mine, nineteen five. Was it? It's, it's a dust containment device. Uh, we've gone how many years without it now? One. Just one year. So definitely next year it would have a restoration, based on the cycle. It, we missed one cycle year, we'd go into the next cycle year, right? So we wouldn't know. I don't, see, we I don't think we're going to see what happened last year to the gravel roads. I don't see it being any worse this year. You'll have the same amount of dust and silt runoff that we experienced last year. I, I, what I meant to ask is next year it'll be included in the budget. Well, I put it in every year. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so. There you go. So it will come back. I'm saying, all right. I should have said that. Last year, last year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not an all or nothing situation, right? Right. It's, it's not something that builds up in the soils, and it's pretty much used within a year. So, or it gets rinsed out within a year. So it's not going to be. The people that lived on a gravel road last year won't experience probably anything worse this summer than they did, but... Okay. Well, what I mean is, I you put half back in and do half the roads, and then the following year do, do half the roads. Cut your budget in that way, as opposed to I all or nothing. About. Do, you, do you have a schedule where you don't have to do all of them at once and you can do half and then half I the could easily year? split it. I would probably always apply it to the most heavily traveled, like EV Road is a cut through to the transfer station and would need it more so than Vogue or something, you know, something that's just the residents that live on the road as opposed to a through street. Okay. Harvey, did you have any comment on this? Thoughts, questions? In a perfect world, what would be your druthers about this? Do it or not do it? I would like to do it every year if I had my choice. And the problem, the problem basically varies by amount of traffic? So, uh, yeah, I, th I think Bruce's suggestion is um, a, a part of part of what I guess m of my suggestion, which would be uh, to only do it on the most heavily traveled roads. So why don't As we a, why don't we instead of we're trying to get a motion this year, this year and store half the just the ones that really right. need have to make a motion on that. Right, that'd be what, yeah. So let's make let's someone propose a motion to restore half of it. And well, well, let me is half enough. Or is half too much to do the most heavily traveled? Well, I, without doing an analysis, okay. Of mileage, whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah. But you could attempt half to work it out. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Half's better than nothing. Correct. All right. Someone would like to make that motion. I move to restore the calcium chloride um, budget in public works by. That amount would be the amount of <laughs> it was nineteen five, so nine uh, ninety seven fifty nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Any second? I second. Discussion. Any other comments? You know, we're trying to make the budget. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so move. I have one more question. Yeah. Public Works, can I ask now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have one more question. This is your night. That's fine. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the what else were you going to do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, under Public Works, uh, uh, page 92, repairs and maintenance. Public Works General Highways, repairs and maintenance. 
Yes. What is that for? That is for all repairs on equipment and trucks, all vehicles and equipment. Is, is that, uh, so is that outside time, how outside people do the work? Is that what it is? Well, we have a mechanic in-house, so if he has to do a, a brake job on a large truck, that would be the parts. Um, pretty much it's parts. If it's something that we can't do in-house, then it is an outside contractor. If it's a computer issue with the trucks, we don't have the software to diagnose that. So computer issues, we do sub out. Um, but pretty much it's just all parts and material to repair the trucks. If there's tires, that sort of thing. Hmm. So most of that money is, is purchased hardware Parts, which is parts is most right, of the money. Right, it's the routine maintenance, the oil filters, tail lights, you know, anything that would fall under. Hmm. I guess I would relabel it uh, uh, purchased parts or, or purchased replacement parts because it looked to me like, it says repairs and maintenance, I think of labor or some expertise. Well, I guess it, there are some things we do. Our trucks are Nutmeg Internationals and Freightliners, and there are times that if it's a computer issue, an electrical, sometimes we have to send it to the dealer. We do whatever we can in house, but we can rename it. Well, and I, our naming conventions are in accordance with the state of Connecticut Unified Charter of Accounts, um, and it wouldn't be labor. Labor is always at the very top, everything else. And I can, there's naming, numbering conventions. Anything in an object that begins with a 5-1 is labor. 5-2 is considered a benefit of some sort. 5-3 is some We're type sort of purchase, purchase, that, purchase yeah. services. So there's a rhyme and reason to how they get numbered and done. Okay. I'd be careful copying the state. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Beth. And just to clarify, because... There's a unified chart of accounts because we do a lot of state reporting, and the whole point is that we don't we'll be able to start loading up to the state. So that's that's part of the reason I meant to we're be there. He's, he's, I, I know, but there's a reason why. Yeah. So thank you. Okay, next item is on our list. So what I'm going to do now, I have only one that I want to discuss. Um, the others, I'm just going to go down. If you just interrupt me as I move through, if you'd like to discuss any of these items in any further detail, health and human services, anyone? Recreation and leisure, anyone? <coughs> Debt service, anyone? Interfund transfers, anyone? Capital? Capital reserves and other funds. Wait, can we go back to the interfund transfers? Yes. Where, where is that? That's letter G, but you're looking for it in the book? Right, in the book. If you're in the book, in um, section two, it's the last pages. Okay. I just wanted to see the... So the, the payments for this project and the other, the four capitals, is still in there, right? It's the first line, and it's entitled... Oh, um, capital savings, okay. Capital savings. So you'll see that that budget increased by $3,700. Yep. If you flip to the next set of budgets, debt service, you'll see debt service went down by $3,700. So there's that um, discipline verify whatever debt service retires by, we add to the savings fund to help offset the cost of these okay. projects. All right. Yep. Anything else, Tracy? Nope. I just wanted to follow the money. Okay. Very good. Um, we went, we've uh, shared services. Any more questions there? Revenue? Board of Education. I'm going to make a comment on Board of Education that I want to put out for the record. I don't know that I articulated it well enough at our meeting on Saturday, given the, um, the position with the, the line items for security that they posted. But, you know, it's a critical concern to not acknowledge by part of our budget discussion um, that is school security, especially in light of our current uh, situation, uh, the current events. 
And the Board of Education funding to explore and implement uh, security initiatives didn't go ignored. We take it seriously, and the safety of our children and to move forward with that initiatives, initiatives should be outside of the budget process. So we believe it's essential that we're going to collaboratively work with the Board of Education, the Board of Selectmen, and then evaluate what is clearly necessary, and, and then we're going to do that. So by removing it because it had a placeholder in their budget does not mean that this board is ignoring that, and we intend to move forward with that. With that said, as we go through discussing what we're going to do with um, considering any monies for assign fund balance toward offsetting some of the costs of the mill rate. My recommendation would be not to use any of that in light of the fact that we may need to spend some more money in security later on. So uh, that's my comment on Board of Education. Does anyone else have, want to add anything on Board of Ed? Yes. As I recall it the other day, um, the, board, the superintendent and the chairman of the Board of Ed were here, and they sort of volunteered that they um, could find, I think it was fifty thousand dollars without breaking a sweat, and um, that's well, I didn't know if it was without, without, without breaking doing sweat. any. There's a little damage. bit of sweating in right. there. It wouldn't be without cutting program, right? And um, I guess my the, a two part question: Is that still the case? And um, do we need to know, or do we care to know, um, where they're choosing to do that? I think he, in general, said materials and supplies and stuff but so the first question is it still on it's still it's, it's still a commitment to that's still been so their budget is, our our plan is to okay. consider that 50,000 reduction okay and how they do it i guess that's their business at this point um, um, until we give them a budget we don't even know exactly where they were going to make those cuts I, I don't think we want to get down in the weeds of their business to be honest anything else and and and, and. Yeah, I think what he said is that they can, they can swallow that without affecting personnel or programming. So I think if you start to cut, if you start to go deeper, I think you're going to start hitting, you know, people and, and kids. So. Did you have any other questions or anything on that? For Board of Ed? No, I'm glad that you clarified, though, because I was thinking the same thing, is that it might have kind of gotten lost in the, in the shuffle there. But, um, so they will do a study and then come back to us, and we will all discuss it again. This, this situation, by the way, may be much greater than just providing security in the schools. Right. It may be including all the town property. So the Board of Selectmen have to be part of that dialogue, and the two boards together, along with us, right. helping to find out the resources we can to offset it, and including public safety, of course. So it has to be a dialogue that's helpful. I totally everyone. agree. Yeah. Very good. Are you recommending we take them up on that 50000 Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to know when to hold them. <laughs> so, yes, I okay. I, I mean, we, nobody uh, twisted their arm or put them through the ringer, and they seemed to think they were comfortable. So, yes, I think we should. All right, I'll go along with that. Now, the safety, 150000 is that going to be put in a different category next time we did not put back. any we did not put anything in there at this point but when it comes back is it going to go back into the education budget or don't we know where it's going we to have no idea at this point because it may come out of shared services it may come out of a different town budget depending on what the recommendations of the uh, group would, would come out thank you yeah and i can support that as well and that was one of the things we kind of solved later in the afternoon is to not touch fund balances to offset this you know, it's 150 maybe on the board coming soon. So I'm good, and the board of Ed Brian and Brian did commit to the 50,000. So without any reduction in services, I'm comfortable. I agree. Everything's been said in the last. Thank you. All right. Very good. Okay. This is that exciting time of night where it's guest and audience comments. So I want to invite our citizens to come forward um, and uh, speak to us. And then uh, we'll be having conducting after that. More, our agenda item is to to vote and send a budget to town meeting. So, would anyone like to speak on this? First of all, I want to thank you guys for this whole budget process. This has been um, a lot of years for me and my family. I appreciate the effort that you put into it. That being said, I also want to thank you for putting that Coliseum back on the DB road. Thank you. Um, 
when you're considering the budget for um, fire or police, I'd like you to consider we have three parts of police officers that we spend a lot of money on for training and uniforms, and we don't get anything back from them if we do with the full-time police officers. So maybe when you're looking for that $150,000 for the schools, you might want to consider maybe putting a full-time position at the school and accommodating one of the part-time positions. And I'm saying that coming from law enforcement, and I think full-time police officers do a great job here. Part-time police officers can be used for dances, things like that, but we spend a lot of money on training them, and they don't provide the full service that the full-timers can do. Also, there was talk about the fire department eliminating, um, cutting back some hours. I can tell you personally, years ago, we bought, we went strictly with the volunteers before we got the pay, and uh, the full-time and part-time fire in there. My husband got called out of the house at 620. He was a state trooper. For a call around the corner from our house for a woman who was unresponsive. He did CPR for 33 minutes before <coughs> an East Line EMS person responded because there were no volunteers and we didn't have a few people at that time. And then when it was 48 minutes before somebody who least had it showed up and the woman was 78 years old. She was the EMS volunteer. Seriously needs to think about not cutting the hours back in this town, especially during critical hours. People who want to volunteer, I'm sure it's in their hearts, but those are critical hours. And I can tell you from a personal standpoint that that was critical that day. If they had had somebody responding quicker, the woman might have had a better chance. And for him to do CPR that long was just absolutely crazy. But there was nobody in town. And that was at 6.25 in the morning. So before you cut back on the hours that we have with our part-time and full-time people, it could mean someone's life. So I just want you to consider that. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Yes. Well, Jay Morrow, I'm from I am a part-time fire department now, and I have some numbers for each of you that I put together for comparison of two full-time <laughs> firefighters versus one full-time, one part-time firefighter. And then today I actually filled out a second sheet where we would use two part-time firefighters, saving the town approximately 60,000 in benefits a year. Now these numbers are raw, but they're, the hourly rate is accurate and, and the um, hours worked are accurate. Um, and I did go back and look at the 12, 13, 14, 15 budgets. And the former first selectman had been increasing the um, salary line for the paid staff every year because he saw a need to cover four hours per week. Uh, Full-time firefighters started at 5 in the morning and worked till 3.30. He got his 42 and a half hours of work in in four days. Now part-timers covered with him those four days and then two part-timers covered Fridays. Um, and we save the town thirty thousand approximately in benefits every year, and that Friday costs about ten thousand, so that's a, a twenty thousand to the good. Um, I have not seen the public works or the uh, public safety proposal for the two full-time firefighters. I've yet to see it as a member of the career staff. I have not been privy to it, what the details are of it, and. I don't understand how we can have two full-time employees with benefits package and pensions to work for less than what these numbers are presenting you for what we have done for the last 10 years. Um, we had a meeting today. It wasn't quite explained to me in detail. I don't know what the final answer will be, but I'm championing for either remaining with one full-timer and with one part-timer per day or going to full part-time. I don't see we're in a position to add another full-time employee with benefits and pensions. Thank you. If you have any questions on those numbers, I'm here to answer. Any 
question being? Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? like to add something on to what Jay said. I was at the meeting today with him also. And um, coming from the ambulance perspective, we have relied on the staff that serve the town, the paid staff that serve the town Monday through Friday. They come in early in the morning to cover those hours when somebody is waking up and finding their loved one unconscious or unresponsive and calling for help, where most of our volunteers have either left for work or our night shifters aren't home from work yet. They provide a cru crucial service during that time. Um, we are very fortunate to have in our town five paid staff who are career firefighter EMT professionals. They're professionally trained. In their real world, they get paid about $30 an hour. We are getting them at a bargain price to provide an excellent service. They are actually an adjunct onto our volunteer staff, our volunteer EMS staff, and our volunteer fire staff. They have a level of expertise that nobody else in this town has. They're also longtime people. Um, they've been on, um, one person's like been here for 13 years. They know our town. Two of them are town residents. They know our town, they know all the roads. One person, full-time person, recently left his position. If you fill those two positions, two full-time people, you're going to have to, and you get rid of all the per diems, which is what we're told is possibly the plan, you're going to have two full-time people who may be totally unfamiliar or not have the skill level that these guys have. When you've got a structure fire going or you have a cardiac arrest going, you want these guys on your side. So my experience, I was here day one when we hired the first firefighter. EMT person for the town of East Town. I was here on that committee and I've been here all the way through. I've seen a lot of changes, but we have a top notch per diem staff that we're getting for a really discount price. So I'd just like the Board of Finance to consider that when they make their decisions. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Yes, please. Any other questions? Anything else? Any other questions or comments? Anything else? Okay, with that, I'm going to close public comment. So, Cindy, would you be able to give us an update on where we are with that minor change we just I'll give you the update, and then I was going to go get it printed out for all of the for you. Okay. You are right now at a total budget of $31,562,517, which would require a mill rate increase of 0.19 and a tax increase of 2.1. Okay. I'm going to take a brief, I'm going to make a motion to take a brief recess to allow Cindy to go in and... I've got the motion. I'll print it out for you. The motion, of course. I'll be right back. So we're going to take a five-minute recess. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Five minutes. We'll start at seven oh five or eight oh five. I'm sorry.
the whole board process is running so much smoother and better. Is it any less prescriptive than it used to be? Because it doesn't appear to be. No, it's not. 31.562, right? That's what she said. Um, yeah, I was going to have her printed out. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's even more so. So much for public process, right? It was, it was apparent from particularly the minutes I finished writing them today of yesterday's meeting and where you were going to be. And then completely 180 from what you were doing to leave a Ends and means and it's kind of like <laughs> the road doesn't connect. You have minute set A, minute set B, and oh. they don't jive at all. Mm. Yes, I'm in favor of using general fund to offset. Yes, I'm in favor of using general fund to offset. You went around the room two times, you got everybody's buy-in, you wanted to do that, and then you come in and said, no, we're not going to use general fund, we're going to save that money for later for the school security issue, and there was no discussion on it whatsoever. Everyone was just in favor of <laughs> no So clearly you had no. a discussion. Okay. She raised the question. Actually, so it's scripted to happen next. Okay. Just I'd like to call this meeting back to order.
Okay, so before we, uh, well, why don't we go forward? The next item on our agenda is uh, vote to send the budget to town meeting. So Cindy was able to prepare a motion based on the decision we just made. Would someone like to give a motion? Yeah. Yeah. May I ask a question or two? You may. Um, when we finished up on, on Saturday, we um, had a, a fancy screen, which I see we don't have now, and the ability to look at different scenarios, um, what would happen if we dipped into um, fund balance by X, Y, or Z. Um, I did not take it that we had come to a conclusion that we did not want to dip into fund balance. That's a good point. It's not just, you know, it's not just a board member saying that I don't want to do that. So that's that's a really good point. Um, let's. Do you have that available, Cindy? Yeah. Let's see. All right. And, and if you can, great. If not, we'll we'll. No, but I, mean, I just have to update it to the numbers you did tonight. So hang on. Yeah. So your question is, do we want to initiate at least a discussion on that matter? Yeah. And since I opened my mouth first, I'll start. Um, our policy says that we want to keep fund balances within a range of percents. Correct. Between 8 and 15 percent. And we're somewhere in the 14. And I guess one thought, which I'd like to hear other people's ideas on, is um, if we keep our fund balance at the top of that range, um, the next time that the state decides that it's going to look around for ways to spread the, the pain in Hartford, um, their past practice seems to have been to look at the towns that they thought could best afford to absorb um, cuts in educational funding and so on. And so uh, if we keep our fund balance near the top of what we, of our, what our policy calls for, are we simply inviting our friends in Hartford to come along and say, oh, well, we're going to give you guys a, a haircut and force you basically to spend that fund balance on whatever. Good, good question. A good start with some dialogue, right? And so the we, alternative let me just, is basically name, to use it to benefit taxpayers. So I now, haven't local taxpayers. Now. We really didn't decide on that before moving forward, so I'm, I'm grateful that you brought that up. We should discuss that now and then decide collectively what we think we should do. So, just to remind everybody, that is um, our, our town's fund policy is to keep a range of money in the unassigned balance. So. The analogy I prefer is to say, okay, there's like a checking account and a savings account. All the reserve funds that we have are, are our savings. The checking account is the unassigned fund balance. And our goal is to keep enough into that account that goes between 8 and 15%. That's our target. And we've been maintaining the higher end of that. Now, if that money remains in that account, it's really not, it's just for, it's kind of like an emergency fund. And in my mind, if I'm, I'm okay with using some of that so that I can lower the mill rate and keep the taxes lower. My concern, and the reason this year I did not move forward with that, because initially, if you heard my comments on our first meeting, was that I wanted to get that number so our mill rate was going to be lower than what we actually set. My big concern is the security issue that we're facing with our students and, and uh, public safety. And if we come to a conclusion that there's going to be an additional cost, I don't want to assess it directly to the taxpayers. I want to be able to absorb it within that cost. So that is the reason, in my view, that I wasn't asking to look at that. But that's just my position. Now what I'd like to do is hear the positions of our board members. So would you like to articulate any more, Harvey, before I go to Tracy? What are your thought processes? Um, well, that snazzy thing would be a little bit helpful, but in the absence of that. Um, so just to articulate it for the benefit of our guests, 
um, what we did was we took our, our sheet and Cindy developed a, a nice spreadsheet that we all can see and we were able to look at if we went with using 50,000, it reduced it by X. And we saw, we were able to see a, a spreadsheet, if you will, that allowed us to almost make a decision based on that. Would you like to know where you stand today, though? Yes. With the current budget at the thirty-one million five sixty-two five seventeen, you would be at if you spent everything based on productions, you'd be at thirteen point seven percent of of the budget uh, beginning July one, twenty eighteen. So what you're saying is, right now, our the estimated number is thirteen point seven one is what we have toward the higher end of that spectrum. Very strong financial. And the request, the request that was made for one fifty that you removed. So if in fact you were to appropriate that, you would be at thirteen point three percent. Again, this is based on your own year end projections and the state paying us like you're supposed to. Does that help our help caller? So do you want to know it based on any well, dollar number? It seems that the, the if we use no fund balance whatsoever, then we're in a really strong position if we decide that we need to spend a hundred, a hundred and fifty or whatever on you know, increased security. If we used a hundred or hundred and fifty now, and later decided that we needed another hundred and fifty. We're still in a very strong position. It's not like we're blowing through our savings account willy nilly. So, with that, would you be able to read to us if we went through three hundred thousand of unassigned fund balance? What would that give us in the reserve percentage? It would be twelve point eight percent, but that's also assuming the state comes through on all their promises. So, there's just that's my caution. All right, so okay, I'm putting it. I don't. Think, I okay. haven't reached a position. I just don't want to see us say, "Oh, okay," and walk away. I understand. I agree. Tracy, would you like to? I'm not an expert in, by any means, but I think I get it. Um, before we just before we move the safety and security thing around, I was thinking, well, we've already, you know. There's a little bit in savings. We could use that to offset. But with us not being sure what's required and what's going to be needed and, um, you know, any of that, I, I don't think what we're looking at here as a budget proposal is onerous. Um, I just looked it up. According to our handy-dandy chart, it's less than $37 a year per average homeowner. Um, and... I think I'd rather keep the money in the bank knowing that it's probably going to be spent on the safety and security thing at some point in the future, hopefully within the year, but, you know, very soon. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> what would the uh, dollar amount be that we'd have to um, use to get to a zero budget? Zero increase. Zero increase, I'm sorry. Just as, as a starting point. A lot, Pam. Well, it's going to be 500, right? It'd be, it'd be almost 500, almost. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So did you have a, a flavor for a number? Because if it's 500, it makes it a zero increase. That's a, a zero dollar increase. A zero dollar increase. But, but not a, a zero milligrate increase is another question. And I think when we were here on Saturday, it was somewhere in the range of 150. Right. It, it, yes. Yeah, so, so taxes could go up without the mill rate changing because of the grant list. So to get to a zero, mil, I was thinking taxes, so my apologies. Probably about 
More like 165,000. Start calculating it. 165, you said? 50 last week, but then we just restored 10 to right. the yeah. highway, so that's why we're so. And you'd also retook. And we also had um, EDC, but I had already factored that in. But yeah, so it'd be about one, 160, 165. Do you want to take a let Todd go first? Yeah. So, uh, I'm ready. So, um, so in theory, we're, if you even consider library with maybe coming ahead, we, we might be looking at closer to two hundred thousand dollars by the time you look at security and libraries and two unknowns, right? So. Um, I'd caution against going too far into that fund, but I could support, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. It's taxpayer money. Everybody in the room's paid it. And we're building a, a war chest for who knows what, and we still have well over four million dollars, and we did use a hundred thousand dollars of that. But I, I wouldn't go further than that. Like I said, if, if we're potentially looking at at least one hundred fifty uh, plus some library expenses. And always the state concerns is always there. Okay, great. Thank you. That's uh, mine. I like the idea of a zero mill increase. It's uh, a good direction, but I don't want to do it to press the sake of the vote. So I'm a, I, as, we, as we talked about on Saturday, we do have some knowns out there, potential knowns, potential purchases that are important to town. But, so, but it looks like we have beyond the we take the 165 hit now to get a zero mill increase. We have much, how much more is left to spend on things like security systems and the library? Well, you would continue to draw down your fund balance. Right. So. We start putting ourselves in a place I think that would not make us very comfortable. Right. It's not outside of our our domain, but I, it doesn't make me as comfortable. I, I, I agree. I understand. Um, so, to your question, though, the number would still be over four million. Right. It would be teetering at just below four million, and again, and I know I'm the wet blanket here, but just I worry about the state as well. I think if you go too deep, and you mm -hmm. have to do the appropriations, and this you get hit again by the state, then it all that it, that could be very impactful. Any other so <laughs> we could uh, go for hundreds. The difference with the 100k reduction in fund balance. Okay, still so have enough left over to take care of. Cindy, would you be able to give us that number with 100? That would be a 0.08 mil right increase, and that would be unchanged from the reliance you have this year. Okay. And I'll ask one more question. Thank you for that number. Uh, in our experience as a town over the last 10 years, we went into the budget. I'm sure this question came up about every year. Uh, what was the experience? Did we eat up our fund balance? Did we, did we go sail through the, through the year? Did anybody know? So what's the experience? Are we doing something that's out of the norm? It was generally the policy not to do it unless you needed to do it. Yeah. Not to do what we're doing now. Or talking about, discussing the, doing now. In the right. years that you would budget a half million or so, we would use about half of it. So it's it's a budget it's a budget balancer, but we if we budgeted five six hundred. We would we do two fifty to three fifty. But so, the time the fiscal year is up, you would use half of that fund balance. Right, but the cushion basically. Right, but those again, those were when the state was fulfilling their obligations. So that's the other piece. You know, I, I kind of like the hard we start off. He looks at our books, and they are looking at our books. I assume. If they think that we got a little too fat, they can uh, reduce their funding to us. You think they would pull that kind of stunt? Well, last August they wanted to know what our projected fund balance was for June 30, and the response with this board was not to respond. So that's interesting. A lot of towns chose not to respond. It's not like they couldn't. Well, they did. Of course, they, they did, but but they were, but they right. were. I think they were hopeful that there would be some. We'd all have these great increases. I guess I could support a hundred k reduction or fund balance to get to a mill increase of 0 0.08. Okay, so in order to continue with this discussion, generally we're all in agreement with supporting some of the unassigned fund balance. Could we ask uh, Cindy if? 
the wet blanket if that hundred thousand. <laughs> well, I was going to go to the number six. I want to first see. I want to haggle out whether we all agree that we can do well, some support. That, that help me. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me. That help. What would the hundred K be? The hundred K would give you a point oh eight mil rate. No, but I mean, would that put you out of your comfort zone? I wouldn't go. I wouldn't be comfortable with more than a hundred with everything else coming down. But that's your decision. So when we did the work on front on Saturday, we looked at 50, and that brought us to point. And now we just restored 10 to. So do you want to see what 50 does? How about 60? Can you put 60 in just to <laughs> get us to the Whatever 50 you want. want. How about 63,700. <laughs> that's the <laughs> <laughs> It's 0.12 to 60. Are we all in agreement that we want to use some support? I, I think all we're doing now is and then we have arguing have all, about the price. Right. All right. So we all we all agree we want to use some support, and we just have to figure out our number. I'm going to go around the room. I just want to hear kind of a consensus, and then maybe we can decide which way it is. Do you have an idea? I think a hundred thousand would be um, the, a reasonable number. It's our relative to our policy. We're still in the upper end by a whole bunch. Um, if it comes along and we have to spend 200 grand between a librarian and um, uh, security, we're still going to be like 12% of, you know, the 12%. So we're still. In good shape, I think. Very good. Tracy? Um, if we're going to do it, I'd prefer to be less than 100. Um, just because when you do it every year and then your budget goes up, the percentage comes down and all that fun stuff with percentage. But um, also, the ECS is somewhere. Our ECS from the state is three and a half million, something like that. I don't want to even get close to approaching that in any way. So Do you have a number in mind? I mean, 50,000 is nice and, you know. Yeah, 100, we got 50. Going. <laughs> <laughs> Going once. Well, first off, why are we doing it? Are we doing it to get a budget passed? Are we doing it to save the taxpayers money? Are we doing it because we can? What, what's the, are we doing it because we have too much money in the bank? Why, why, are, we, why are we doing it? You know what I mean? Is, is all of the above? Is that? I think it's, a, for me, it's probably the second one where I feel, I want to make sure we have enough money in reserves for contingencies, yet I want to make sure I'm not overtaxing our citizens. Uh, I just thought by now we would have weaned ourselves away from reliance on fund balance. And to, to continue to balance our budget by taking money out of our savings is just, just doesn't seem uh, responsible. Uh, that's why I want to know why are we doing it? What, what's our see? Reason? That's where I differ a little bit, and I don't look at it as savings. I look at the reserves that we put aside for capital and all the things that have been allocated and discussed a lot. Those are our savings. Those are monies that are saved for specific goals. This is kind of like your checking, and just like in, at the end of any year, you say, "Oh, I got a little more in my checking account. Now I can afford to maybe purchase that item." Or not spend money. It's it's our way of balancing out the taxes instead of continuing. We could end up continually pushing up the, the mill rate as a result of having this extra money, and therefore it's translated as taxation. I don't have a dollar figure in mind, so maybe we can just okay. Come to your here. Yeah, I I understand like you, Bill. I mean, like I said, it's taxpayer money that we've collected and or not spent. And every year, hopefully, there's more money that goes back in. Uh, so I'm, I'm very comfortable with using about $100,000 back into money people have already paid. Okay, Tom. I agree with, with Greg. Uh, well said. I'm for 100 k myself. We're, we're heavy. I understand. I'm new to this game, but we're, um, we're heavy in the fund balance. We're not lean on the fund balance. There's a lot of money sitting there. And as, as Greg said, it's tax taxpayers pay for it it's already there from previous taxes so we got to uh, we got to be lean but not mean 
So I think if you take a little bit out, it kind of balances the situation. Okay, so with that conversation, in order to settle on a number, let's get a motion to uh, on, on the table, on the floor for that, um, for 100. And then we can vote on that, so that makes sense. Would anyone like to make that motion? <laughs> I can make a motion, or I'd like to make a motion that we use up $100,000 uh, into the, uh, uh, the unassigned fund balance for the 2018-2019 budget. Second? I second. Okay, discussion. Discussion points, Tracy? Um, no, I guess not. Bruce, you're okay with the 100? Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Okay, Cindy, you're going to need to uh, readjust our uh, our motion for our budget. <laughs> know. But could you just give me a minute to just double check all the numbers after everything you did? Yeah, fine. Thank you. Time. You bring people back. Mm -hmm. midstream to say, okay, we want to, you know, do this fund, that fund, or whatever outside of the budget process, that mm -hmm. there should be impact. You shouldn't just be able to say, oh, we got money, we can just afford it. It is a large no. I, no, I don't think that's about to happen. Yeah, but, well, if we keep the money in there for it, it does. Oh, I see. I see. So I think it's well, a challenge. If, if, if you have a town you meeting and a referendum. Need, need some emergency. Oh, I understand you know, um, okay, and how, how do you pay for it with that proposal? So, then right, this is yeah. what it is. You want it? Yes, it costs this. this is Just giving Cindy a moment to update the motion that we're going to address, and then we should be able to wrap it. to get groups all the time come forward. I would like this, I would like this, I would need this, contingency, this, that. We don't do that anymore. It just for the new members, when you look at your budget, it's not like I can just transfer money out of, out of fund balance. So there's a revenue line that says use of fund balance. That's just so, so you know. And, and for everybody, just a reminder, when we did this last year as well at the same sum. Either you can alter your sheets or I can print you a new one. We can alter the prefer? sheets. Why don't you okay. go ahead and give it that? Well. So the total budget amount stays the same. It's just your resources. So it's a mill rate increase of 0 0.08 and a tax increase of 1.7%. Someone like to make a motion? Hi. I move that we present to the annual budget meeting scheduled to be called by the Board of Selectmen for April oh, 20th. I'm sorry. That was from last year. Please make it oh. in your public hearing. My apologies. Oh. That was from, uh, I cut paste from when it failed last okay. year. So stated the public hearing. Public hearing okay. April 24th? Yep. That's correct. And that just, didn't happen. I, I, I'm sorry. This, I cut and paste from last year's budget alert. So it should be to present to the public hearing scheduled for, because you called the public hearing. Scheduled for. Yeah. My apologies. No problem. As soon as I heard you say it, I said no. <laughs> what do I know? Okay. I move that the Board of Finance present to the public hearing scheduled for April 24th, 2018, at 8 o'clock p.m. at the town meeting hall. At the municipal. At the, <laughs> here, yeah, right? You know what? You guys can just shoot me. I'll start all over. It should say at the 
Municipal Office. Nathan Hillray High School at 7 p.m. Oh, with the auditorium. Right? auditorium. That's what happens when I just change the numbers. Right? Yep. The numbers are right. Time and place to change. <laughs> All right. So time's a charm. <laughs> okay. I move that the Board of Finance present <coughs> to the public hearing scheduled for April 24th, 2018 at 8 o'clock p.m. 7 p.m. That's 7 p.m. I'm not doing it again. At 7 o'clock at the Nathan Henry High School Auditorium, a total budget of $31,562,517 based on the grand list as of October 1st, 2017 of $871,380,752. The budget review would require a mill rate increase of 0 0.08 mills or a 1.7% tax increase. Can I have a second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Okay. Um, before we conclude, for the benefit of all our citizens that joined us tonight, we want to I want to first thank everybody. There's been a lot of people that participated here. Um, I want to begin again with all the full time and the support people that the town uh, has. They, they've been putting a lot of hours in. Our elected officials have been putting numerous hours into coming and collecting all these budgets. And I want to thank this board who's worked tirelessly. I, um, for some of you, you might have made it through, but it was two marathons over two Saturdays, and uh, we all we made it through. So I want to thank everyone for doing this. I also want to um, encourage uh, everybody to join us at the public hearing. So there's a public hearing on April 10th at 7 p.m. at the high school. And we have the budget meeting, which is Tuesday, April 24th at 8 p.m. at the town. Um, now, do we have these two places? We just said that, but did, did she just read the same ones that I'm reading off of? Yes. Okay. I said April 24th. Is it April 24th or is it the but This one says town meeting hall, not the That's high school. That's the town meeting, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm a failure on this motion. April 10th. Can you guys allow Deb to adjust that in the minutes? Yes. Okay. Did everybody get that? <laughs> Anything else? I gave you the motion you're going to do at the public hearing. <laughs> the oh, public hearing is oh, April 10th. Right, 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 right. At Nathan Hill Royal High School. So and then the budget 10th. meeting is at <laughs> April 24th at 8 p.m. We're going every two weeks for the next. And then we have our budget re referendum on Tuesday, May 8th at the town meeting call. Well, hold on, I'm confused now. <laughs> let's, let's read this Why would you be confused, Todd? Really? The, the audience, the benefit of myself, the Board of Finance. Okay. Yes. The, the motion was to uh, present uh, the at a public hearing to the town at a public hearing scheduled to be called by the Board of Selectmen of the Board no, that's, of Finance. That's, that's ignored. Struck. That's all struck. But the that, date I, is April 10th. April 10th. April 10th. April 10th I, and where's it going to be? High school. High school. High school auditorium. And the purpose of that public hearing? Is to hear comments from the public. It's allow the public to comment on it. And who conducts that public hearing? Board of Finance. Board of Finance. Okay. And then once the hearing is concluded, assuming there's no issues, then, it, then the Board of Selectmen. Then the Board of Finance meets. And you're going to get that motion again, <laughs> but it's going to be correct. And then you would set the budget. You could alter it. You would meet, set the budget, and then you would ask the Board of Selectmen to call a town meeting, and they'll meet immediately following you and call the town meeting. Okay. So the public has got another opportunity to talk to us. Two more times. Two more opportunities. Okay. Public hearing and town meeting. Town meeting, it can't be changed, though. It can't be changed, but they certainly can ask questions. Yes. They can ask questions to help them understand if yeah. they want to support or mm -hmm. not support the referendum. And the public hearing at, on August 10th, uh, April, 10th. <laughs> April 10th. You can tell um, you everyone's tired. <laughs> April 10th at the high school auditorium convenes at 7 p.m.? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And that public hearing notice has already gone to East Haddam News and will appear this week. I think it'll appear for two weeks in a row. Yeah. Okay, so we made our corrections. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do you have anything else? Second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
we figured it out. I was going to make you leave the room. <laughs> and I just wanted to touch both of you on that. I edited the letter while you guys I read that. The letter you did? Well, I this looks good. Yeah, no, you're absolutely My voice of reason there, yeah. I know what happened. For whatever reason, it's like 100,000 for security. Firefighters, security, libraries, the other thing. The state funding is for savings is white. I'm not going to say if it's that bad, $100,000 is going to be. So this is I think it's a friend of ours.